Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Miner. This weekly no fluff mindset show arms you with the practical tools you need to get unstuck so you can get exactly what you want out of life. Remember, when you change your mind, your life will follow. Let's get into today's episode. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to the Unstuck Podcast. Thank you so, so much for being here with me today. Happy to have you. Happy to chat about something that I think we all probably need to hear. Maybe not right now. Maybe it's something that's going to come up for you in the future. Maybe it's something that has been the case for you in the past, but we got to chat about it and we've got to learn how to handle it a little bit better. And that is overwhelm. And really why I say we need to handle it a little better is because I think a lot of us just aren't handling it. um, And we're just kind of living in this place of constant overwhelm. And well, that's not good for us or our energy, as I'm sure you can imagine. So let's chat a little bit about how we can... um, you know, steps we can take or tips we can use to get through that place of overwhelm that we all at some point are going to experience. Can we agree on that? I really chose this topic to be totally transparent and honest because I'm feeling overwhelmed, 100% overwhelmed in my own life and business and I needed to hear this myself and I need to kind of go through all of these tips on my own. And then it came to me, hey, I should probably share this with the rest of the Unstuck crew because they probably need it too. Um, I will tell you that the overwhelm I am experiencing is a really great, exciting, wonderful thing. And that's really the case with overwhelm is that it doesn't have to be negative and bad stuff. And we'll kind of go over the different ways it can show up. But for me, it's just, it's a good thing. It's a new branch of my unstuck business that is very close to becoming a reality. It's something I've been working on for months, which if you follow me on Instagram, and watch my stories, then you have kind of been seeing little bits and pieces of it, although I'm being very secretive of it still. But it is something I've been dreaming of doing for a really long time. And now it's coming to actually be birthed. And I'm excited about it. But anytime I create anything or start any new project or branch of anything, there's a lot to do, especially towards the end when the deadline is looming. And I'm not someone that is super hard on myself as far as deadlines, because that just makes business not fun. And I'm determined to keep my business as fun and easy and simple as possible. But at some point, you do do have to create a deadline. (laughs) You do have to actually set a date of talking about things. And it's approaching very quickly. In fact, if I'm not going to give it away totally yet, but I will say that if you are an entrepreneur in the wellness space, so in any capacity of wellness where you are focused on helping people get well, physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, any of those things, then you're going to want to stick around for sure because I'm about to offer like the most beneficial free offering you will ever experience and that is kind of going to be more towards how to be abundant in your wellness business. So if you are someone who has that already or is in the process of building a wellness business or is going to maybe you're in the process of getting your certification or going through the educational piece of that, then you're going to want to stick around. And in just a few weeks, I will be announcing how you're going to 
get your hands on that free training. So we'll be hanging out and I can give you a bunch of free information on um, actually finding abundance in your business. That being said, lots going on and it's like my to-do list is a mile long and I'm trying to not let that get to me. And I do have moments where, and if you have ever been overwhelmed, you know this feeling where it's like, it's just heaviness. It's like, for me, it's in my chest. I just feel like this weight when I start thinking about that to-do list and how long it is and what is still required of me (laughs) before this deadline. I can feel it right now as I'm speaking, saying these words, that heaviness is there right on my chest. And so I have found some things that definitely work for me, have worked for me in the past. And I thought I'd share them with you if you are someone else that is overwhelmed. Before we get into those tips, let's talk a little bit about this feeling of overwhelm. First of all, why do we have it? And really, it comes about when it just feels like our stress is too much for us to manage. Um, for me, I see it at least in part, as being about putting our attention on the unknown of the future. So it might be something where it's like, if I don't do this, then this might happen. So in my case, it's like, if I don't reach my deadline, then this could happen. If I don't get all of this done this week, then here's what's going to take place. And it's like, I don't even really know what that then is. I just don't want to experience it. And I don't want to have to get there. I want to reach my deadline. I want to get everything done on my to-do list this week. But then it's it feels stressful. And that stress can get to a point where it just feels like, oh, I just can't deal with this. This is just too much. And, you know, getting to that place where we're thinking about the future what happens is we tend to play out the worst case scenarios of all the things that we have to do, of how much time they're all going to take, of what's going to happen when they don't get done. We take all of that. We create all these stories of what could happen, the worst case scenarios, and we take them to be the truth. Like, oh, that is what's going to happen. It's not what could or what might. It's like this is what's going to happen, something bad. And now it's overwhelming me. And now I feel like I have 100 things to do in 30 minutes. It's just too much. So as I've said, when we think about what causes overwhelm, a long to do list is one of the biggest ways you can start to feel overwhelmed. But also even something that is a change in your life, or an unexpected life event where you now have something new to figure out or to organize or to put into action and it's outside of your comfort zone. It's not what you're used to. It's not what has happened that you know how to manage. Now you have this new thing and then that causes overwhelm. It's also something that we can put onto ourselves. It's a voluntary thing when we create an unachievable goal. Like for instance, in my case, I put on this deadline. Well, I could move the deadline if I wanted to by like a month and then I wouldn't have this level of overwhelm. So I am I putting this overwhelm on myself? Maybe. But uh, like I said, in my case, it is a good thing. And it's all things that I want to do. It's all things I know I can do. It's all fun. So I don't really want to change anything about it except my approach to it. And that's what we're going to get into. Another thing that can cause overwhelm is an unprocessed emotion or event. So we talk here about emotions that haven't been expressed and how that can cause stuckness, physical stuckness, in your body, but also energetic stuckness and emotional stuckness, <laughs> all the stucknesses. And this can also cause overwhelm if you haven't processed an emotion because 
It's just going to continue to spiral and get bigger and bigger and grow wings until you don't have control over it. And the longer that goes, the more overwhelmed you feel where if you just gave your energy into processing that emotion or that event, maybe it's like a breakup or a death in the family or a a loss of a job and you're trying to hold back how you're really feeling and trying to just kind of go through the motions, but then you never actually end up processing that emotion. The emotion of the event can get to a point of overwhelm. So that's when we need to process. Now, this is something that I often, very often find myself in. And even a little bit right now, I'm feeling myself in this, you know, kind of going along with my overwhelm right now is tons of ideas. And a lot of times this is a good thing thing. Like you, maybe if you are an entrepreneur or if you are kind of one of the creative outlets of your job or even something at home where all of a sudden you have like just this crazy amount of ideas and things you want to do and things you want to create and different processes you want to put into place and how good it's going to be when all this is done. And I'm so excited for like all of this to happen and the outcome is going to be so cool. But then it like gets to this point of overwhelm with all those ideas and how cool it's going to be when they're done, except that you still have to do them all and you still have to figure out which ones are going to work and which ones aren't going to work and put your team together and all this stuff. So this is where, you know, overwhelm doesn't always have to be a bad thing or come from negative experiences or, you know, this crazy to do list of things you don't want to do or anything like that. It could be a really good thing. Thing with all these really awesome ideas. They're actually going to make your life or job or business easier. But at the time that you have this brain dump, that it causes, you know, this first level of stress or overwhelm. The next thing that I think a lot of us find ourselves in, especially if you're someone who is um, kind of a control freak or a perfectionist or something like that, where You want to do everything yourself because you know you'll do it right. You'll know you'll do it the best way. And so you take it all on yourself and you don't take help. You don't ask for help. You refuse help. And then all of a sudden, again, your to-do list is a mile long and you want to do it all right and correctly. So now you have this sense of overwhelm. So at that point, of course, we need to accept help. We need to acknowledge that we need help and accept help, and we'll talk about that. And then the last two causes of overwhelm that I came up with would be perfectionism, which I just talked about. So wanting to do everything perfectly, which means you're spending tons of time trying to achieve something that doesn't exist, that is impossible, and then it makes your to-do list that much longer because everything is just trying you're spending so much time trying to be perfect and then with procrastination which perfectionism and procrastination very much go hand in hand which I believe I talked about on the perfectionism episode and if you haven't listened to that it's a good one definitely go find the perfectionism episode I will link to it in the show notes but with procrastination either you are a procrastinator And so you save everything for the last minute and then you feel the sense of overwhelm when it all needs to get done in a time frame that isn't possible or you feel overwhelm and it causes you to procrastinate because you just you're stuck. You are frozen in that sense of procrastination and overwhelm. So they kind of can work together. It depends. One can come before the other in any case. So that's what causes overwhelm. Now, what it looks and feels like when any of these things are happening, first of all, it's what we all know to be stress, like crazy stress. And I think often if we think about our stress and where it comes from and why we're feeling it, it is because you feel overwhelmed. So that's something to acknowledge. It's I I really love when people get to a place where they understand that stress isn't the end. Like there's something underneath the stress that's actually causing you 
to call yourself stressed out or to feel the feelings of stress, there's actually another feeling under there. And if you can get to that point, then you learn so much more about yourself and can very easily, or I guess easier, manage your stress because you know what's underneath that. So a lot of times, overwhelm is what's underneath our stress levels. It could be other intense emotions too, like anger, sadness, irritability, anxiety, worry, doubt. It's like feeling these emotions to the max. And that level of unwanted emotion in itself can be the cause of your overwhelm. And it also, too, comes out quite often in our behavior, which could be seen as like lashing out, you know, irritability, uncontrollable crying, panic attacks, or even more so look like complacency or despondence or just not doing what you should be doing or what you told someone you'd be doing. You get into this kind of despondent place. Now, I do want to point out that if you are having these actions based on overwhelm, then that could very much be a sign that you haven't expressed the emotion that you need to express, and that could be actually what's causing you your feelings of overwhelm. So that's something to look into, and you may just honestly need to get that out. Just that behavior could be what releases that emotion. So if that's the case, go for it. But if you are using these emotions to express your overwhelm, then we actually need to get to the root of the overwhelm. (laughs) I hope that makes sense. That might just be really confusing. Hopefully not. Hopefully you understand that, you know, it could be something where you do need to just get those emotions out and the overwhelm releases that, that feeling, that sense. But it also could be that you're just using those behaviors as a tool to showcase your overwhelm and to um, kind of let it fester. So it, you got to be able to kind of decipher which one is happening with you if you're having any of these behaviors when you feel overwhelmed. All right, so let's go through. Let me see. I have eight things, steps or tips or whatever you want to call them, that you can do to deal with with overwhelm. The very first one, which we just got done chatting about, is feel it to deal with it. So you have to acknowledge that you are feeling overwhelmed and that it's causing these other unwanted emotions like stress or anxiety or worry or doubt, whatever other emotions. I mean, very seldom are we only feeling overwhelmed. There's another feeling that comes along with it. And uh, so you really need to get to the root of that. Get curious with yourself and see what's really going on there and see if you can find all the emotions that are clumping together to cause your sense of overwhelm. And um, be okay with feeling those emotions. And that's the hard part because we don't want to feel unwanted emotions these negative emotions. We don't want to feel those. But so much of overwhelm is caused by us pushing away and ignoring these emotions, which means they only magnify to the point of kind of exploding almost, especially if you're having these behaviors that come along with your sense of overwhelm. So we got to feel it. You got to feel the overwhelm. You got to feel the other emotions there. And Give yourself that time and that space to get there, to be able to express it. And we've talked many times, I mean, being able to express emotion is super important to getting unstuck. It's really the the critical component there. But when you're feeling this overwhelm, it's also so important in order to actually get beyond that so that you can be productive, so that you can achieve your to-do list and start creating these new amazing things or whatever you need to do, whatever has gotten you into this place of overwhelm. We need to be able to express that emotion. There are so many different ways to express emotion. Sometimes you need to talk to someone. Sometimes you just need to cry. Sometimes you need to punch a pillow. Sometimes you need to go 
on a walk or even like a long weekend at a spa or whatever you need to do. Time alone, time with your um, partner, time with your kids, anything. There's so many different ways. It's going to be different for each and every one of you. But you've got to nurture yourself in that way and allow yourself that time and energy and space to get through that emotion. The second thing is to do some investigation. So what thoughts are coming with this overwhelm? Is it something, you know, we so often, again, very rarely do we even recognize this because our ego is just constantly talking to us in the background. It's these thoughts like, oh, I have so much to do. I'm never going to get this all done. Or I don't have time for this. Or this is going to take forever. Or I have no idea what I'm doing. How am I ever going to get this right? Or I can't be in two places at once. How do they expect me to do this? Have we all said something like this in, in our minds, whether we know it or not? Although I think now that I'm saying this, you're like, oh, yeah, I probably I probably said that at some point. Um, so these things are not helpful. Saying these things to yourself when you are feeling overwhelmed are not helpful. Those thoughts are contributing to this sense that you're having and it could be without you even realizing it. It's like you are only perpetuating this feeling the longer you let yourself speak to yourself, the longer you, you let your ego speak to you in this way. It's adding fuel to the fire. And this is where we can remember that we have the power to change what we say to ourselves. We can change our thoughts. You don't have to have these thoughts. Your ego doesn't have to have control over you. It doesn't have to continue to put more gas on the fire. You can choose to think differently about this situation. You can choose to instead say something like, you know what, I may not get it all done today, but I'm going to get it done. I think it's time I ask for some assistance on this, or I'm feeling a little overwhelmed right now. I'm going to take a break, do my thing, and come back to this when I have a clearer head. You have the power to choose a different thought. You have the power to get clear on what is contributing to your unwanted emotion and what could change your unwanted emotion. And you can do so by way of your thoughts. All right. Number three, breathe. Well, that's simple. We're doing that already without us even having to think about it all day long. But deep breathing, it guides your nervous system from sympathetic, so that stress response that we feel that we are constantly in when we are in a state of overwhelm and it turns it to the parasympathetic or that relaxed response just by taking a few deep breaths. It automatically does that. Your nervous system automatically makes that shift. Now that is pretty simple and that can immediately change things for you. You can do that when you are at your desk and your boss is calling your name or you're at home and your kids want a million different things. You can take a second, literally it probably takes 10 seconds to take some deep breaths and immediately change things for yourself. So I would recommend taking at least five deep breaths If you can, like if you're not driving or something, close your eyes when you do so and count to five on your inhale. Hold it for just a tick or two, one or two counts, and then exhale for a count of five and then hold it at the bottom for a count or two. Simple. You're creating a little box of inhales, holds, exhales, holds. And do that for five, a count of five, if you can, if you have the time. If not, do less. Do as much as you can in the time that you have before your kids run up to you or your boss comes into your office. Just do what you can. Number four, chunk it up. 
if you are feeling overwhelmed by your to-do list or by that idea list that you're having, you need to break it down even further. And really, you even if you don't feel super overwhelmed, but you do have a long to-do list, I recommend this anyway. I love to create a list based on a scale. So I create a scale. Uh, first, the scale we're going to create is by level of importance. So what things do you have to get done? Like life or death have to get done or I'm going to lose my job or my kids are not going to survive. I'm not going to survive. Something like that where it is a very, very important thing for you to get done. If you, There's no way around it. You got to do it. That goes at the top of your list. That goes on the list. What I would do is either take a big space below that have to do list or on a whole nother list if you can, you know, flip it over, whatever you can do. And then this is if you are actually writing with a pen or paper, if you're electronically creating your list, then make a big space or create a new document or something and put everything else that you have to do on that list. So it's like anything else that if you get it done, great. But if you don't get it done, it'll be fine. Life will go on fine. So these would be things like doing the dishes, getting the laundry put away, mopping the floor, something like that where, yeah, we want our laundry put away. We want a clean house. Um, The dishes definitely need to get done. But if you don't, it's going to be okay everyone's going to survive, the world will still be just fine. Because then we can see that, yeah, there are things that are super important that need to get done. And those can get done. But then our list becomes a lot shorter. And when your list is a lot shorter, it's this crazy thing where the same amount of things have to get done. But when you just focus on what must be done, suddenly it creates more time for the other things. And we'll talk about why that is because there is a huge energy shift. But if we can just chunk up our list so that we can kind of refocus on our energy on what really needs to get done, then amazing things happen and you probably will get everything done. The dishes still will get done. The uh, laundry will still get put away. It's crazy how that works. But um, to see if you can do that. So that's the first way that we want to create a little bit of a scale or chunk up our list. Now, the second way, and this is number five tip, is to also create a rating system based on your excitement level of each. Now, I know doing the laundry, putting away the dishes, all this stuff is not exciting. This would be kind of a better tool perhaps to use if it's a case where you have a lot of ideas or you have some things to get done at work and they're all kind of the same level of importance. Create a rating system of excitement. And then, you know, with 10 being like, oh my gosh, this is going to make my day. I cannot wait to do this thing to number one being I never want to do this again in my life. (laughs) So create that rating system and focus on the nines and the tens. Again, if you are in a place where you're feeling overwhelmed because you have so many ideas, so many things you want to get to and things you want to do, this is where nines and tens are the things that you put your energy towards and the rest can wait. Uh, Same thing with a to-do list. Do the things that need to get done, but then also you enjoy or are exciting for you to do because, again, it changes the vibration. It changes your energy towards your to-do list, towards the things that have to get done, and just that change in energy will clarify so much for you, will give you so much extra space to where, um, because you're in that place of enjoyment and alignment and feeling good about what you're doing, that then you still do have the time to get the other stuff done that's lower on the list, that's lower on the excitement list, that's lower on the need list. It all gets done. But 
I love using both rating systems and, uh, you know, don't let, if it's something that's exciting, but not really super important to life, but you do have something that's like, if you don't do this, you're going to lose your job. Well, then that takes precedence. The need will take precedence. But if you can combine the two, if there's something that's of equal importance, but there's something that you enjoy or you are excited about, if you make that the priority and do that first, again, the space and energy opens up to get everything else done for overwhelm to not even come into the picture. Number six, quit multitasking. I am so bad at this. <laughs> this is my own, me taking my own advice or, or me finding out what I really actually need to do and, and now passing it on to you. When we get to this place where we have a lot to do, we suddenly think that doing two or three or 10 things at once is the way to get them all done. And it is not. It is not. Doing everything at once doesn't work. It makes you do everything slower or and or worse, not as efficient. It's just not a good idea. So as much as you want to multitask to try to get everything done better and quicker, please refrain. Again, go back to your list and focus. Focus on the need, focus on the excitement level and work down from there. This also means closing all of your computer tabs and we can take this literally to mean like that's exactly what I need to do is only put up one computer tab at a time. But also figuratively, when you have this overwhelm going on, the stress case going on in your head, for some reason, it's like a million different light bulbs are going off too. And you're in a million different places at once. We can think of those as computer tabs of our mind. You have too many tabs open in your mind. See if you can shut it down, recenter, refocus, and just focus on one thing at a time. And if you're having problems doing that, I would definitely do that breathing technique. And I would also recommend, of course, you know, I'm going to say this, meditating. Even just take a few minute break from your computer or your family or whatever and try to center yourself. Do just a quick three minute, five minute meditation and recenter yourself and it closes down those tabs automatically. It's just like clicking the X on your computer, clicking the X of each tab. It Meditation does that for you too. Breathing does that for you. Okay. Almost done with this list. Number seven. Oh, by the way, also, let me go back to multitasking because that also means turning off your phone. A lot of times when we are multitasking, we're multitasking with things that have absolutely just totally energy drains, have absolutely nothing to do with our to-do list whatsoever. It's a form of procrastination and it only makes things worse. So shut down your phone, the apps, the social media, anything to where you use that as a way to kind of zone out. Like sometimes I get to the point where I'm checking like my weather app just for no reason when it's perfectly sunny out, you know, just don't do that. (laughs) Shut it all down and get to work and and stop with the multitasking. All right, now let's move on to number seven. And this is to do something else entirely. Again, the hardest thing to do when you have a lot on your plate is to not do any of it. But what if it gets you back to your flow state? back to that place where suddenly you are busting through all of it and you are getting through that to-do list with time to spare. Simply doing something else entirely can do that for you. And what that would be, well, what gets you into that place of flow? What calms you? What relaxes you? What lets you kind of... your shoulders just come down away from your ears and just you breathe a little smoother and calmer and you just feel good. For me, you know, love me some nature, love me some exercise and hiking, meditation, journaling, 
cooking up a, a delicious meal, doing some chopping and maybe listening to a good podcast while I chop, something like that. I love it. What is that for you? S- go try to do something else entirely, even if it's like, I have three hours until my deadline. Spend five minutes doing something else entirely. Go for a walk around your house or around the block or the building. Just do something and then come back and just watch how your energy changes and that flow state can come in. And lastly, really to sum it all up, is to stay in the present. Stay with the moment. So just this moment, I will do this. In this moment, I am doing this. In this moment, I am doing this. Just keep reminding yourself of what's going on in the present. As soon as you start getting focused more on the future and what may or may not happen, how you will or will not get things done, the outcome, um, you know, negative or positive, as soon as you start going there, bring it back to this moment. I'm doing this in this moment. I am doing this in this moment. It's almost like a meditation. It's like an, an active a meditation almost. It's like you're getting into that space where you're reminding yourself to come back to the present, come back to the present, come back to the present as you are going about your day. And that is where we can really find some some peace and some presence and get that flow state, get in the zone to where everything comes a lot easier and stress-free with those ideas or that to-do list or that emotion you need to feel and processing it. It really all comes together when we can go about it that way. So I hope this gave you something to think about. And I think even just reminding you that overwhelm is probably going to happen to most of us at some point. It probably already has. Maybe it is right now. Or if not, it probably will in the future. And it is something that we can manage that we can find a new path through and that it it does actually require a little bit more um, insight, I guess, to that overwhelm, to really understand it and get around it so that you can be productive and be at peace and um, feel better, just feel good about what you're doing and not get into those unwanted emotions. All right, so really, I think this would be fun to do, whether you're feeling overwhelmed or not right now, is to do that exercise with your to-do list. This is your homework. Write down everything you need to get done and then create that ranking system of both what do I need to get done, like that life or death scale, and then your excitement level about each and see if you can then rearrange your to-do list to be like, I need to get this done and it's going to be really exciting or really fun or I'm going to really love to do it and start there and then just see how the rest of your to-do list flows from there. I think you'll find that a lot more gets done with a lot less stress and overwhelm when you approach it from that place. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. And again, like I teased at the beginning, if you are an entrepreneur currently or in the future in the wellness space, stick around. You can head to the Facebook group I created just for you over at facebook.com slash groups slash unstuck wellness. Um, And I'll link to that in the show notes. And you can head over there, share your story, share where you're at with your business And you will be the very first to know of my new free training coming out in just a few weeks. It's going to be a good one. You won't want to miss it. All right, everyone. Until next time, take care.